This session provides an introduction to availability, reliability and maintainability assessment. It should be noted that some industries refer to these techniques as RAM assessment. However, there is no difference in approaches other than the name. This short presentation provides an overview of how ARM techniques are used within industry and provides a brief overview of the types of techniques available and their application. Further presentations are also available to describe specific aspects of ARM assessment in more detail. Before we move on to discuss application of ARM further, it's worth taking a few moments to define the terms availability, reliability and maintainability. Availability is defined as the portion of time that a system is ready for use and able to carry out its primary function. The availability of a system can be calculated by dividing the system up time by the total time. Unavailability of a system or portion of time that a system cannot fulfill its primary function is the complement of the availability. Given that it's only possible for a system to either be available or unavailable and both number of probabilities, the sum of the availability and unavailability must equal 1. Thus, unavailability can be calculated by subtracting the availability from 1. Remembering this relationship is important as ARM calculations are usually focused on component failure and as a result calculate the unavailability. Other useful definitions in relation to ARM assessment are reliability and maintainability. The reliability of a system is defined as the probability of non-failure in a given period which is generally taken as being either the mean time between failures or the expected failure rate within a given period. The final ARM term is maintainability, which is defined as the probability of repair within a given period. Maintainability covers a wide range of activities including access, disassembly, modular construction, fault finding, mobilisation of spares and repair time. ARM assessment is primarily concerned with the system reliability and abilities to provide a defined function, and whilst it is not a safety assessment, the results of the ARM analysis can impact safety. Considering the example of a car with a defined failure being unable to get to work on time, certain ARM faults may prevent us from getting to work but do not result in a dangerous condition. For example, failure of door locks. By contrast, failure of the steering has both ARM and safety implications. ARM assessment tools are flexible and can be scaled and tailored to suit each specific application, allowing effective use of assessment labour and resources. When considering a system for analysis, it is possible to assess the system at varying levels of detail. System level for example a car, subsystem level, such as an engine or braking system, or component level, for example a timing belt, tyre or brake disc. In addition to setting the level of detail, the ARM assessor has the ability to use ARM tools in either a top-down or bottom-up approach. Using the car as example, the top-down approach considers high-level failures such as failure of the car to get us to work and then works back through the system to identify faults that result in high-level failure. Top-down assessment tools include functional block diagrams and failure modes and effects analysis. In the bottom-up approach, items within a system are assessed individually to determine all the high-level effects following failure. Parts counts, fault tree analysis and reliability block diagrams are all examples of bottom-up assessment tools. The final choice regarding the level of detail for the assessment and application of top-down or bottom-up approach 
will be driven by a combination of assessor experience and the information required from the assessment. The use and application of ARM varies within industry and whilst the underlying concepts and methods are all identical, there are differences in terminology and application. The differences in the goals of ARM within different industry sectors are discussed further. Within the oil and gas industry, ARM assessment is primarily used to maximise the availability of equipment to maximise throughput and production targets. In direct comparison, the nuclear industry typically has more heavily safety-focused drivers for carrying out ARM assessment. ARM assessment is predominantly used to access equipment designs to produce frequency data for initiating faults, which can be utilised within safety analysis to determine the safety requirements. Whilst rail and mass transport operators, such as airlines, have safety responsibilities, the primary focus of ARM work is the prevention of service effects and failures. ARM is used to ensure that their systems are sufficiently robust such that failures do not degrade the ability to run services on time. Assessment of military equipment is heavily tailored towards ensuring that hardware is capable of completing a specific mission and drives spares and maintenance requirements. Knowing, for example, how many tanks are available and how many would be likely to fail during a battle allows commanders to assess how likely they are to achieve a set outcome. A good example of this are the German Panther tanks in World War II. Whilst they were technically excellent tanks, their poor reliability prevented them from fulfilling their primary function. Finally, the IT and telecommunications focus is primarily on customer service, where ARM is used to demonstrate the ability of the provider to achieve their agreed level of service. ARM assessment can be utilised at any stage of the project life cycle and provides a number of benefits. Identify components that have an excessive effect on the system reliability. Allows for option assessment or selection as part of optioneering activities. For example, this might provide justification to expand or modify the design to increase capacity or provide additional redundancy. Provides assurance that the design can meet its operational target prior to undertaking expensive manufacture and installation activities. Allows the development of maintenance strategies. For example, this might include informed resourcing decisions for employment of maintenance personnel and the use of sensitivity analysis to compare loss of availability when optimising spares holdings. Enables informed strategic financial decision making in support of the improvement of process or system configuration reliability and cost effectiveness. This presentation has provided an introduction into ARM assessment and its benefits. Thank you for listening.